Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, we're going to be discussing what are design patterns. So I have this little Prezi presentation here that was generated by an AI. I actually haven't seen it yet, so we're going to go through it together for the first time, and I'm going to be giving you some insights into what design patterns are, and we'll see what the AI has to say as well. So let's start with the definition of design patterns. They are typical solutions to common problems in software design. They provide a template that can be applied to solve similar issues encountered in various situations. Yeah, so a design pattern is essentially a way of organizing your code and structuring things, generally using like object-oriented programming or maybe some other programming paradigms, but a lot of times it's object-oriented programming. And it's the way that you structure the objects and the classes and the way they all relate to each other to help you solve common problems. Because what's happened is like over the years, programmers have identified these very like common solutions to common problems. And so if you can learn like five or six of these design patterns, then when you run into one of these problems, you'll kind of know like the best way to solve it. So it's just about like finding the best way to solve something. So a little bit about the history and the evolution. Yeah, so it started in the 1990s with Christopher Alexander in architecture and the design book, or the book Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. You'll also hear um, about people talking about the Gang of Four. That's like these four software engineer authors who wrote this really good book on design patterns. So really it's just been like over the years as these patterns have emerged people have written books about them but it's not like a design pattern is like a specific thing that you'll find in a programming language it's more just like an architecture thing so the key terminology uh familiarity with key terminology is essential to understanding terms include creational patterns which deal with object creation structural patterns that focus on object composition and behavioral patterns so those three uh categories i totally agree creational structural and behavioral they kind of determine how you're going to be structuring your code and it really just depends on what you're trying to do so with creational like that would be maybe you need to create objects in a certain way or you need to create certain entities in your software a particular way or in a flexible way structural is more like how do you structure all the code so how can i create objects and classes which allow the code to be structured in a way that makes it maybe easier to reuse or extend or test and then behavior has to do with like the code is, you know, you're performing some action with the code. So a lot of times, like one of the behavioral patterns patterns you'll hear about is the, the mediator pattern. So it's a, the way uh, the way it works is like you'll have this one kind of class which mediates and controls how all the other classes work. So yeah, there's really, again, these aren't like one specific thing. It's more of just like an architectural thing, but those are three really good categories to break it down with. So then let's look at the types of design patterns. Yeah, so we kind of talked about this a bit. Creational patterns deal with object creation. Uh, the Probably the most popular is the factory pattern, um, the instantiation process. They simplify the creation of objects based on specific criteria. And a lot of times this just means like if you need to create certain objects, it makes it easy to do that in a flexible and kind of dynamic way. Then we have key creational patterns. So prominent creational patterns include the singleton, the factory method, and the abstract factory. All right, then structural patterns. Structural patterns focus on composing classes or objects, allowing for seamless integration and organization, and they facilitate the design of complex systems. Yeah, so the structural patterns, it, it, think about this as like how do things kind of hook up with each other? How do they relate to each other? So the structural pattern will determine like, kind of like these little octagon blocks, like how things kind of all fit in. Um, and that's just, it just has to do with the way that you design your classes and your objects. And then common structural patterns are the adapter, the composite and the proxy. So one of these I can talk about, the proxy pattern. The proxy pattern allows you to intercept all of the kind of actions or all the things that happen on an object. So if I was to like, get a, it's kind of like think of getters and setters like if i was to try to get a particular field on an object the proxy would allow me to intercept that and then maybe do something or maybe change something around according to that and then behavioral patterns yeah oh perfect we got the draft skin right here that totally fits draft academy behavioral patterns focus on communication between objects defining how they interact and cooperate yeah so it's it's more about facilitating like how does the data move through your app or through the software so notable behavioral patterns include observer, strategy, and command. Uh, one we can talk about there is the observer pattern. So the observer pattern allows you to basically observe whenever something happens. And this, this actually goes hand in hand with the proxy pattern that I talked about. But with an observer, like if I were to change, 
a field on an object or something, I would be able to kind of react and respond to that. So this is like reactive programming. Uh, it would come into play with behavioral pattern. All right, so then the benefits of using design patterns. So one is reusability. Yeah, design patterns promote code reusability, allowing developers to implement established solutions repeatedly. So this kind of goes back to what I was saying uh, with you know, just what these do is they allow, they're kind of common patterns that make writing software really easy. So if you use these patterns um, and, you know, all you have to do is just kind of like look up XYZ pattern tutorial. There's tons of tutorials on these, but they organize your code in such a way that it makes it a lot easier to test, a lot easier to extend and a lot easier to just manage over time. So these patterns can be really powerful. And then maintainability. So using design patterns simplifies code maintainability by providing clear structures and guidelines. It facilitates easier updates, debugging and enhancements. Yeah, so it, it again, it just provides like this kind of standard, right? So this is the standard way that we're gonna do things. We're gonna follow this pattern and there's, a, there's so many of these patterns. So pretty much any situation that you run into. Now, one thing you do have to worry about is, and this goes into maintainability is, you only want to use the patterns that you need, right? One thing that people fall into is that they'll use patterns just willy nilly. Like they'll just get really excited about a design pattern and then they try to put it in their code when it doesn't really need to be in there. So you have to, you know, use your discretion with these. Like the bigger the code base gets, the more these are going to be useful, the more you want to focus on design patterns. But if you just have like a small code base, you might not necessarily need these patterns. Um, it's really just kind of up to you to, to determine that. So then communication and understanding design patterns, standardized terminology and concepts, fostering better communication among developers. Yeah. So again, if everybody on the software development team understands that there's these three patterns being used, anytime somebody deviates from that, or anytime somebody needs to add code or do something in the code, they'll do it according to that pattern. And then everyone's just on the same page as opposed to, you know, Dave came up with some strategy for moving the data over here. And then, you know, Larry comes in and changes it up with his spaghetti code. You know, if people are just kind of coming in and adding code willy nilly, like how do you know that it's following some standard? That's where the design patterns are really good because they set that standard. Okay, I wonder if that's it. Oh no, we got one more section. All right, so practical applications. Design patterns are commonly used in software development to facilitate efficient architecture. Yeah, that's good. So again, we kind of talked about architecture, like it just, how do you organize all the code? That's what the design patterns are worried about. And then some case studies, consider the use of the factory pattern. So the factory pattern, for those of you who don't know, it's a way of being able to create objects of particular classes with, uh, you know, in very specific ways. So like if I had, it's kind of hard to give an example, like just off the top of my head, but imagine that you had a factory and you wanted to be able to create like a widget, right? You could create five or six different variations of that widget inside the factory. That's sort of what the factory pattern does. So I might have a class that's really complex in my software. And if I want to create a specific type of that class, I could call a factory, which would be, you know, this design pattern. It's basically just like a, a method, kind of like a constructor. And depending on which factory I call, I would get a different version of that method out of it. And then it's also talking here about MVC model view controller. If you guys have used like Ruby on Rails or, I mean, that's probably the most common MVC framework right now, uh, or Java Spring, uh, maybe it's called Spring Boot. I actually don't remember. <laughs> I haven't used that one since college. But a lot of these like web applications, they, they'll use these uh, patterns, you know? Oh yeah, frameworks like Spring. Okay, so I should I should have just read that whole thing. All right, so then future trends in design patterns. As technology evolves, new design patterns emerge. Yeah, and so patterns like circuit breaker, I'm not sure what that one is, event sourcing. Yeah, there's a lot of these that I haven't studied yet, but the thing is like with software, a lot of times it is just solving like the same five problems. So it, you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily always gonna need new design patterns. Like it's not like these things are coming out every day, but you know, over the years as different problems emerge and as different types of computing become popular, yeah, new new design patterns can come into the mix. All right, so I think that does it for design patterns. Now you know a little bit more about what they are and you can go off and start studying them for yourself. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and otherwise I'll see you in the next one.